play my senior year. I get drafted 155th pick overall. Okay. That's not what I'm here to talk about either. I'm here to talk about the most important part of your experience here in college. The reason why you're here is to prepare for the rest of your life. Again, like I told you at the beginning, I'm not here to tell you have a backup plan. I'm sitting here to say that 99% of people in your position will not play professional sports. 1% will. I don't know what 1% will out of you guys. Hopefully you do. Hopefully you don't have the same type of experience as me as when you, hit, when you run into a running back in a regular season game against the Minnesota Vikings and you lay on the ground for 90 seconds because you can't move. I hope that your neck doesn't go out on you. I hope that your ankle, I hope that your body, I hope that you get the opportunity to play for 20 years. But I guarantee you this, and this one you're going to have to write down, 100% of you will retire. Not 99, not the 1%, but 100% of us that play sports will retire. You'll retire, you'll retire, you'll retire, you'll retire, you'll retire. And the question isn't about how much money you made in the time that you played, but the question is what are you going to do when you're not playing? When somebody sits there and walks through, that walks through that door the next year wearing your jersey, number 26. Same number, different player. When they walk through the door on your, wearing your jersey, same number, different player. So the things that we have to understand is that you have to prepare for the transition before it happens. What are you good at? What do you want to do? Who's going to be the person that's going to put you in a position to allow you to get paid for that occupation and that job? Utilize your network. Are you friends with people who are in your class going to school for school? Or are you trying to kick it in the back with all your boys and your homegirls who are sitting here and you're on the track team or you're on the football team or whatever sport you play in, are you going to stay in your athletic bubble? Because if that's all you came here for, I promise you, here's what's going to happen. If nothing changed about you, you're going to go right back home to the same situation, doing the same thing that you could have been doing for the last four or five years. I had a friend that sat there and graduated from a major Pac-12 school, major Pac-12 school with a degree in a really good, really good degree program. And he went back home and he started working for Big Five. How are you going to come to college for four or five years and then you're going to go home and work for Big Five and now you have to start at the bottom of the totem pole? So you wasted four or five years when you could have been making $22 an hour now, but now you got to start at $14 an hour with a college education. So the thing about the transition is that it's inevitable and it's about to happen. You can either be prepared for it or you can be surprised by it. And if you know something's about to happen and everybody from me to your coaches to your advisors are telling you that this is going to happen, why are you still unprepared? If I tell you around the corner there's going to be somebody there to scare you and you still get scared, that's on you, not me. Because I told you. And I don't know how long you guys are going to play for, and I hope you can play forever. But if you don't understand that some of the greatest things that you've been able to accomplish have been in your sport, take those skills and transform them into the next part of your journey. Because you're great people that just so happen to be great athletes. Greatness doesn't stop when you're done playing your sport. Greatness is who you are. And the last thing I leave you with, the last thing. A man told me one time, he said, Thomas, if you work hard, life will be easy. And if you work easy, life is going to be hard. So I challenge you to this. If you do not prepare for this transition that's going to happen, you'll be sorry. And there's two types of pain in life. The pain of regret and the pain of sacrifice. One lasts for a moment. Sacrifice. And there's going to be another one that's going to last forever, and that's regret. Shoulda, woulda, couldas. You guys don't have to be that person. So there's a way that I lock things in when I talk and I speak, because we got to sit there and understand that what we said, what we heard, we can't let it go unnoticed, and we're going to have to actually do something to it. So the same way we started this, we're going to end it. I'm going to say, give me one. We're going to get one, two, two, three, three. And I hear, need to hear that, woo, because you're excited to be in this opportunity in this moment. Give me one. Give me two. Give me three.